Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello out there in Auto Line land. It's Friday. Thanks for joining us today as we bring you the latest developments in the auto industry and the backdrop behind why they're happening. Yesterday, we told you the GM PSA alliance was falling apart. Well, today, the news is even worse. GM announced it's selling off its 7% share in Peugeot. That caused PSA stock to plummet 12%, a big one-day drop, and it's dropped over 20% just this week. GM claims the alliance is still in place to jointly develop new products and share in purchasing parts. But it seems that GM is just trying to put a brave face on this. Despite the best of intentions, this alliance is not going to produce the kind of savings they told us about just a year and a half ago. This has been a major distraction from getting on with the job of turning Opel around. And don't be surprised if it's Chinese automaker Dong Feng that moves in to take a stake in PSA. In fact, General Motors was in a selling mood yesterday. Bloomberg reports it sold off its stock in Ally Financial, formerly known as GMAC. Curiously, the company did not report the sale on its media website and its PR staff would not comment on the sale, but it did put out a terse statement. The sale suggests that GM is one step closer to getting its own in-house captive finance operation, something that could definitely help it sell more vehicles, especially in the U.S. market. I keep saying GM is competing with one arm tied behind its back by not having its own captive finance house. So as good as the company is doing right now, it still has a lot more upside potential. But that's not the case at Volkswagen. It just announced it's replacing the head of its U.S. operations, Jonathan Browning, with Michael Horn, who's currently in charge of global after sales at VW. After sales refers to all the aftermarket activities, including parts and service. While the press release says that Browning is leaving for personal reasons, I think it's safe to say he's being pushed out because of poor sales results. Overall, the U.S. market is up 8% this year, but VW sales are down 5%. Kia and Volvo are the only other car makers whose sales are down for the year. And we just saw a big shakeup at Volvo a few months ago. And speaking of people leaving their positions, the head of the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, David Strickland, is stepping down. His deputy, David Friedman, will take over on an interim basis, and then the Obama administration will have to make a new appointment. Strickland has been pushing for mandatory backup cameras in cars, and I think that effort will likely be delayed with his departure. With 23 new global models heading down the pipeline, Ford was going to face problems keeping up with production. But the automaker just announced it's going to hire 11,000 new employees in the U.S. and Asia next year. 6,000 of those jobs are headed to Asia to fill Ford's two new facilities in China, while the remaining 5,000 jobs are for the U.S. to keep up with the 16 new vehicles headed to North America. Ford's on pace to sell 6 million vehicles globally this year, and they're going to need those 11,000 new workers to make all those cars. And one day, those workers will be making autonomous Fords. It's developed an automated version of the Fusion Hybrid in collaboration with the University of Michigan and the State Farm Insurance Company. The Fusion is equipped with driver assist technologies that are currently available, plus four LiDAR sensors to help detect objects around the vehicle. Not a whole lot of details were shared, but Ford hopes to use this technology from this project in its vehicles in the future. Americans buy over half of Harley Davidson's motorcycles, but the bike maker wants to change that. So it just introduced a slimmer and cheaper bike called the Street, which is headed to developing markets. The street is aimed at urban environments with a frame and suspension designed for tight turns and quick moves in traffic. It comes in either 500 or 700 cc variants and will carry a price tag a little over $8,000. Interestingly, the street 
will be built in India, where sales of motorbikes 500cc and above are expected to grow eightfold over the next decade. Coming up next, I'll be talking about the last of the executives who made it to our short list for the AutoLine Executive of the Year. Dow Automotive Systems, driving solutions in automotive, commercial transportation, and aftermarket with innovative products like Betamate structural adhesives. Lighter, stronger, safer. DowBetamate.com. As you know, I've been talking all week long about those executives who made it to the short list for the AutoLine Executive of the Year. I've put together a blue ribbon panel of automotive experts to help me choose the one automotive executive who stood out above all the others this year. So far, we've covered Akio Toyota, Tom Dahl from Subaru, Martin Winterkorn from Volkswagen, and Alan Mulally from Ford. Today, I want to talk about Mark Royce. The son of former GM President Lloyd Royce, Mark has had a stellar career at General Motors. An engineer by training, he came up the ranks on the car side of the business, but he's also demonstrated that he understands the business, not just the cars. That's why he was given GM's North American operations to run, the biggest, most profitable part of the company. Mark is the guy who gets a lot of the credit for the spectacular products coming out of GM today helping the company nab three of the six finalist positions for the North American Car and Truck of the Year Awards. No automaker's ever done that before in the 20-year history of the award. Yeah, he did just get passed over for getting the top job at GM. The CEO position, as you know, just went to Mary Farra. But that move actually plays to Mark's strength. He'll now be in charge of all product development at GM, with purchasing reporting to him as well. And that could be a very powerful combination that will ensure GM's amazing product resurgence is not just a flash in the pan. And that's why my blue ribbon panel decided Mark Royce should be on our short list for the AutoLine Executive of the Year. So now you have all the finalists, Akio Toyota, Tom Dahl, Martin Winterkorn, Alan Mulally, and Mark Royce. Next week, I'll introduce you to the members of my blue ribbon panel and one week from today, we will reveal who we chose as the one executive who stood out above all the others. But that wraps up today's report. Go out and have a great weekend and please join us again here on Monday. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.